Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, this is Impression Blend, and it has been a while since I've done any kind of collection video. You guys always enjoy those, you're always asking for more of them. I have done a few, I will leave a playlist right here where you can watch all of my older collection videos. And lately I've been seeing an increasing amount of comments and messages asking me to show my Criterion collection, so... That's what we're doing today. Now, even though I am obviously very much into physical media, I've only started collecting Criterions a few years ago because the prices are a little bit scary. However, just like any collector out there, I love the amount of work that they put into these editions, so I do feel like they are absolutely worth the money. Not sponsored, by the way. I wish I was, but all of the amazing transfers and the beautiful artwork and the wonderful fascinating special features i love it all so since i haven't been collecting for too long my collection is on the smaller side for now but they are all very special films to me you know how this goes i only buy movies if i intend to watch them over and over again if i really love them or if they're particularly nostalgic for me personally so let me show you what I have. Mulholland Drive. This is actually the very first Criterion that I bought. This is where it all started and there has been no turning back. Obviously a very famous David Lynch film. Definitely one where you discover something new every time you watch it. Honestly, this is one of those films where you need multiple viewings to fully appreciated and understand it and form your interpretation of it. I'm just trying to show you what this looks like on the inside because this is a beautiful, beautiful edition. I have not seen this in a while, so it's definitely time for a rewatch for me. And if you haven't seen this amazing mind bending classic, then it's absolutely time for you to experience it. All About Eve. This is one of my more recent editions and it's definitely one of those black and white classics that I do believe everybody should watch. I mean, the writing alone makes it a must watch. This has to be one of the best written films of all time. Plus, if you like movies about show business, it just doesn't get much better than this. It is smart, it is funny, it's clever, it's iconic, it is a beautiful film with a wonderful cast. I don't know why I'm trying to sell you on this, because probably if you're a cinephile, you've already seen it, and if somehow you missed it, of course, you need to watch it. Another one of my all-time favorite classics, and honestly, one of my all-time time favorite films overall, Some Like It Hot, starring the one and only Marilyn Monroe, well, and the amazing Jack Lemmon and Tony Curtis. Actually, All About Eve also has Marilyn Monroe in it, but it's a very small role. Anyway, back to Some Like It Hot. I have seen this film so many times, I have lost count a long time ago. This is one of the first classics I have ever seen, and it has stayed very, very special to me throughout my life. It's definitely one of my comfort movies and it's probably, not probably, definitely if someone made me make a top 10 of all time, 10 movies I could keep and had to discard all of the rest, this would be in the top 10. Easily my favorite comedy. We're only three movies in and I already want to abandon all of my movie watching plans and just watch classics for the foreseeable future. To hell with new releases until Dune comes out. Tootsie. This is one of those films that you've probably heard about from your parents and they love it and you're kind of second guessing it thinking, can this movie be really that good? And then you watch it and oh my god, it is that good. This is just so funny and so heartfelt. It is incredible. And Dustin Hoffman and Jessica Lange are amazing in it. Another one of those films that I have seen too many times to count. Now here are 
are two films that I actually haven't seen. Well, technically it's three films because one of them is two films in one box and they have been sent to me by my wonderful subscribers who care about my continued cinematic education. Thank you guys so much. I'm so sorry I have not watched them yet. I will watch them next month. I promise. So the first one is a double feature of Lady Snowblood and Lady Snowblood Love Song of Vengeance. These are both samurai films. And I do believe Lady Snowblood was a big inspiration for Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. So yet another reason to watch it. For some reason, I'm a little bit intimidated by samurai films. It's not like I haven't seen any before and I've seen martial arts films in general in the past and I've enjoyed them but something always tells me that I have to be in a specific mood for these which is ridiculous I don't know why I've decided this so I just need to get over that and watch these because I'm sure I'm going to be a fan. The other one, which was a gift, and I haven't unfortunately sat down to watch it, and I don't want anybody judging me in the comments because you haven't seen every single classic out there either. Don't lie. So this is one that somehow missed me or I missed it, but now I have it, so I'm going to watch it, and that is On the Waterfront. Yes this amazing thing. What's funny is that I've actually read a lot about this film. I've seen it featured in documentaries. I've seen clips from it. So sometimes it feels like I've seen this film already, but of course I haven't. And of course I need to. Once again, one of these beautiful book type editions. I'm so happy I own this particular edition and I'm sure this has amazing special features that I'm just going to be diving into as soon as I watch it. Now, of course, this would not be my collection if it didn't have at least a little bit of horror and sci-fi in it. We will get to sci-fi eventually, but for now, let me show you some of the horror and of course, I have some classics in here. First of all, the Eyes Without a Face. This movie, I was not prepared for it. It had no business being as effective as it was considering how old it is. I watched it for the first time pretty recently, watched it in the October of last year and immediately had to buy it. It's something that became an instant favorite for me. It is absolutely haunting and I recommend it to any horror fan who hasn't seen it yet. Another one that is a huge Huge classic is of course Rosemary's Baby. I mean, how could I not own this? This is so, so iconic. The Roman Polanski film that I think every horror fan out there has seen. And not just horror fans, I mean, this is a very, very famous classic. I have to say, I haven't watched this particular edition of it yet. And once again, I'm sure there are some amazing special features in here for me to get into, but I cannot wait to actually re watch it, start digging into the special features and learn more about this amazing film. Then I have The Devil's Backbone. You guys know I am a Guillermo del Toro fan and you might be surprised that this is not Pan's Labyrinth. I cannot justify buying another copy of Pan's Labyrinth because I already own a beautiful steelbook. Obviously the quality of the Criterion Edition would be amazing and probably better than my steelbook, most definitely better than it, but I just, I'm not there yet. I haven't purchased a second copy of a movie that I already own, but The Devil's Backbone is absolutely amazing. It is this haunting ghost story that is actually more of a drama. It is very powerful and gives you a lot to think about if you haven't seen it. Del Toro has a talent for filming these dark fairy tales that masquerade as horror, but really they have something to say and they have something to teach you. And they're always these beautifully sad stories with very Del Toro specific visuals. So I love his films and I'm probably going to end up getting more because there are a couple more in the Criterion Collection. Finally, naturally, I have The Silence of the Lambs. I adore this film. I saw it way too early. I think I was maybe 
13 or 12 when I first saw it. I thought it was terrifying, could not sleep, just burned images into my mind that shouldn't have been there, but I have loved it ever since. This is also one of my favorite Criterion editions just based on the look of it. I think the design is absolutely stunning. Let me show you. I'm going to open this and you're going to be mind blown because this has the whole moth on it on the back look at it it's amazing and of course it looks beautiful on the inside it also has this booklet with photos and information i think if you're going to own a special edition of the silence of the lambs this is the one you need. So that is it for horror. Now I have this kind of random selection of favorites. First of all, Blowout. This movie came out of nowhere for me. I watched it on a whim. And sometimes this happens to me where I watch a film and I have zero expectations for it because someone recommended it to me. I didn't bother looking up what it was about and I just watched it. And it just hits me in a way where I am floored by it and I immediately want to watch it again. I watched it twice in a row, not without a break, but I watched it and then I sat there and thought about it and I watched it the next day again and I loved it again. This is definitely my favorite Brian De Palma film as far as what I've seen. I haven't seen every single film by him, but out of what I watched, this is absolutely my favorite. And look at this cover design. I am in love. John Travolta is amazing in it. It's definitely one of my favorite roles of his. And yeah, if you haven't seen Blowout, if you've seen other De Palma films, and this one is just something that you haven't gotten around to watching, definitely check it out. And the ending of that film is just unforgettable. Then I have All About My Mother. This is the only Pedro Almodovar film that I own on Criterion. I need more and I need them to make more of his films because they only have three total, I believe. We need to work on that Criterion. This film is actually where I would recommend starting with Almodovar's filmography. Once again, haven't seen every single one of his films, but out of what I've seen, this one just is so emotional and fills you with so much empathy. I just feel like this is one of those films where everybody is going to find at least something to relate to in it and it's going to hit you emotionally. It is a wonderful drama. Speaking of wonderful dramas, I have Cold War. If you remember, this is from a couple years ago. I absolutely fell in love with this film when I saw it. It's just, it was unforgettable for me. I knew I had to own it and when they released it on Criterion, I just, I had to get it immediately. This is a Polish film. It is centered around two people who kind of float in and out of each other's lives. It is a star-crossed lovers situation. The way I see it, it is one of the most amazing love stories ever put on screen. I know it's not going to be for everyone because it takes a bit of a different approach to it, kind of avoiding the general life of these people and just bringing you the moments when they are together. So not everybody connected with that structure, but I absolutely adored it and it broke my heart. Back to classics, I have The Breakfast Club. This film needs no introduction. I mean, who hasn't seen The Breakfast Club? This was one of those films that I didn't watch for the longest time. I think I watched it for the first time about five years ago. Yeah, it hasn't been a very long time. I was kind of worried that it was not going to live up to my expectations because so many people love this film and it's so famous. And I was worried that this was something you had to grow up with, that you had to feel nostalgic about to fully appreciate. But no, this is a masterpiece. I instantly loved it. And once again, as soon as I saw it released on Criterion, I had to add it to my collection. Next up, I have a Coen Brothers film, Inside Lou and Davis. This one always surprises me when I hear people talk about it because so many people have said that it took them multiple viewings to fully appreciate it, that they didn't love it on their first viewing. And I have no idea what you guys are talking about. This was instantly my favorite Coen Brothers film. I just knew that there was nothing I would watch that I would love more from them. And it's 
has been true for a while now. I think it might come down to the tone of the film and to the lead character being somewhat unlikable, but I think it's absolutely brilliant. And the music in it and the message behind it. I adore this film. It's one of my all-time favorites overall and... Now I just want to watch it again. Next, I have one of those comfort watches for me, and that is the Grand Budapest Hotel. I actually already owned the Grand Budapest Hotel just as a regular Blu-ray, and I could not resist getting this edition of it because, I mean, look at it. Look at this beautifully designed thing. I just... I could not resist. And I do feel like Wes Anderson is a bit hit or miss for me. I don't love every single one of his films that I've seen, but this one happens to be one that I adore. I love the cast. I love the humor. I love the visuals. It's just, it looks like a dream. And I have to show you what this thing looks like because it is stunning. There's a lot going on on the inside. So I'm going to grab this. That's what the inside looks like. And then it has all of this. This is like a whole poster that's not going to fit in the frame. So I'm not going to, well, let me try. That's the front of it. And that's the other side. Sorry if you're seeing a lot of glare right now. I literally can't see what I'm doing. I am making such a mess taking all of these out. This was a bad, bad idea, but you know, doing it for you guys. And then of course, where would we be without Parasite? Ah, this film. I love it so much and I love the way they designed the cover for it. Look at that. How neat is this? I love it. I don't think I need to talk to you about Parasite. This film has been talked about so, so much. So I do have a review for this. Actually, do you guys think I should do a review series for Criterions? This is kind of disappointing and short, uh, but the rest of this packaging is amazing and I have not watched this. I don't, well, I've seen Parasite multiple times, of course, but I haven't watched this particular edition, so I'm not sure what special features are on here, but they sounded amazing when I was picking up this Blu-ray. Go in here. Goodness. Just look at that. Isn't that cool? I love it. I love the way they designed this. All right, last but certainly not least, I have a collection of Russian movies, a small collection of Russian movies. I mean, I have more Russian movies, but as far as criterions go, this is my stack of Russian movies. Let me show you really quickly. First up, The Cranes Are Flying. This is an absolutely heartbreaking film about World War II. If you want a drama that is going to destroy you because it shows you how the war destroys people, you should check this out. It's not as endlessly depressing as something like Come and See, but it's still going to absolutely break you. And it is a wonderful black and white classic. In Russian, this is called then I have the cinematic behemoth that is War and Peace. I'll be honest, I haven't seen this since I was a teenager, but when I was growing up, I've seen it a few times and it is unlike anything else. This is quite something and I think you need to experience this at least once, just like Tolstoy's novel right? I mean, don't we all need a good Russian epic in our lives? Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. This is 422 minutes long. It's quite an undertaking to watch, but it is 100% worth your time. And the scale of this, it looks absolutely stunning. Check it out when you're ready for it. And finally, we have my favorite, Andrei Tarkovsky. I own everything they have by Tarkovsky on Criterion. They are releasing The Mirror very soon, I think in June, so I'm incredibly excited about it. So the ones I have here are Ivan's Childhood. This is another amazing Russian World War II film that is going to destroy you. I'm actually not going to talk all that much about these because I have promised myself and I have promised to you guys to make a Tarkovsky series, so I'm going to tell you in detail about all of these once I rewatch them all. So, Ivan's Childhood, 
Ivanova Detstva. This is Andrei Rublev, which is about a Russian icon painter. Very little is actually known about this person because this guy lived between the late 1300s and early 1400s. And this is a biographical film about his life. This also is absolutely stunning, as you can see. And it has, looks like this on the inside, it has a gorgeous poster in it as well. I might actually end up hanging this up. I hope this is in focus, but this is essentially the larger version of the art on the cover. And I think it is beautiful with the black and white and the gold. And then two sci-fi films, which I absolutely adore. Solaris and Stalker. These two, first of all, the books these are based on are mind-blowing books that changed my life and I'm not even being overly dramatic. These are books that I had to sit with and just get my thoughts together because they're amazing. I recommend them to all of you guys. And these films, just like the books, are in my opinion, life-changing and mindset-changing. They are quite different from the novels they're based on, especially Stalker. This is kind of an interpretation of the roadside picnic by the Strugatsky brothers, but absolutely worth a read and worth a watch, and it is a masterpiece. I can't even speak properly about Tarkovsky because I'm just overwhelmed by emotion and love for these films. So those videos I'm making, that's gonna be definitely very interesting and very scripted because I otherwise am just going to make absolutely zero sense. But yes, these are some of my all-time favorite films based on my all-time favorite books. One is about an alien planet and an alien ocean and the other is about a zone that makes your wishes come true that is left by aliens is something. And of course, this being Tarkovsky, this is very artistic and very philosophical and just requires multiple viewings. So that is it for my Criterion collection. Let me know if you're somebody who collects Criterions. Let me know if your wish list is a mile long because I know mine is. It is always so difficult to decide what I'm going to get when they have their twice a year sale. I, it's just, it's a struggle to figure out what I'm going to buy next, especially when you look at their box sets. I mean, these look amazing. So I'm not going to stop collecting Criterions anytime soon. And if you have any friends who are really into cinema and really into learning more about cinema, Criterion editions are just a 100% amazing gift. But that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys collect these or not. If you have any of the same ones that I have, if there are any that you think I should absolutely buy, whether I've seen them or not, they need to be in my collection. I'm still going to probably watch them first, but let me know if you have any recommendations for your favorite films and your favorite editions of these films within Criterion. Let's talk in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. A big thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting me on Patreon with an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. But thank you to everyone who made it to the end of this video. I appreciate every single one of you. If you enjoyed the video, which of course I hope you did, please don't forget to give the thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. And I I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.